Heavenly Father, we thank Thee indeed that for the Lord Jesus Christ, we thank for our wonderful Saviour, our wonderful Redeemer, Redeemer. We thank the Lord that with Christ in the vessel, we can smile at the storm, as the hymn writer says. We thank the Lord for your goodness and your amazing love towards us. We thank the Lord you've promised to keep us and you have kept us, Lord. You've promised never to leave us and you've never left us. We help us to realize, Lord, that we are yours. We're chosen in Christ before the very foundation of the world. And Lord, you redeemed us. You plucked us as brands from the burning, headed for a crisis eternity, held captive, Lord, by the God of this world. But Lord, you lost us and let us go. We thank thee indeed for the precious blood of the Lamb. We thank you the blood of Jesus which cleanses us from all sin. And we pray now you'll bless us now, Lord, look at the word of God. You'll bless your servant and you'll bless the dear people of God. As we look upon these things, especially with today, we live in, Lord, a day of much fear. A day, Lord, of much anxiety, as always speaking on, Lord, of the anxiety of people and the anxiety of the people of God. So bless us, we pray to Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> the two verses I'd like you to look at would be verse 6 of Philippians chapter 4. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be known unto God and the peace of God which passeth all understanding to so keep your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, it's, I've returned to a subject I've preached before, not that long ago, because I feel it's a great need, because we live in a, this particular day, a day of turmoil. And there's much turmoil in the minds of, and the hearts of men and women. You have to speak to people, you only have to walk among people. I go to the town centre of East Cobride a lot, and you only have to sit and speak to the odd person to realise that this, it's terrible the way men's hearts are filmed for fear. That's what the Bible says, men's hearts will be filmed for fear. And men have got fear. They've got fear. Take the virus, that's a great fear at present, the virus. And everywhere you look, there's a record of that. You see, um, when you see a mask in almost every person, that reminds you there's a dangerous virus. When you see signs in the doors of shops, remember your mask. And you see what arrows telling you where to go and where to go in, where to come out, and keep your distancing. We're going for a coffee. The seats are all well apart. Particular coffee shop, I go in. They'll ask you the question, are you from different households? If you're from four different households or three different households, you can't sit at the same seat. If you're at two households, you can, things like that. So there's a record there constantly. And I think that upsets people. And there's a lot of the signs, the distancing, the masks has upset people. And especially, there's a fear, especially among older people or people who are maybe sick some people who have got problems and they find it very difficult to source out these things. So the word of God, I believe, brings us the great truth of scripture and great the words of God to bless us. And it says in verse six, be careful for nothing or don't be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be known unto God. And I believe it's a message, again, that the people should hear at this particular time. This message will also go on on the net that goes out to other people. And even amongst our own people, there's maybe hearts feeling. I speak to a few people, and I know there's some people with hearts. There's an anxiety issue. There's a, there's a depression issue. 
and it's nothing, not something to be, you don't sweep that under the car and say, oh, pull yourself together, man. It doesn't work like that. Depression's a real thing. Anxiety's a real thing. So never tell somebody to just forget about it. Trust God. That is true. You do trust God. But remember, it is something that affects people in a real way. It's something that it's a horrible thing. It touches your whole being. It gives, ter puts a terrible feeling in your heart. And God is saying here, look, don't be anxious about the things of this life. He's not saying it'll be easy, but he said, don't be anxious about the things of this life. Now, that doesn't mean to say we've well, not to exercise care about certain worldly matters. Now, we've exercised care in the church. We've exercised a great deal of care. Regards the virus, you probably have seen that, where we separate the seats, the way the church is spread every time. So we exercise care. But when you go down that route of believing and saying, when God says, don't be anxious about the things of this life, it means that there's be, there's the, if we've got such confidence, and I mean confidence in God, as to free our minds from anxiety, and that's a tremendous thing. When you've got confidence in God and the word of God, and such is your confidence in God at that time, it will free you from a lot of anxiety. You see, it's just to know God is, and God is still in the throne. And having such a dependence, having his wholehearted 100% dependence upon God, gives you this calmness, gives you this calmness amidst the storm. Remember the Lord Jesus at sea, the storm in the boat, when the disciples were panic stations, they were anxious. Don't you care, they said. And Jesus says, peace be still. And the sea, not only did the sea go calm, but the hearts of his disciples were calmed as well by his wonderful voice. And it says there's a lot of anxiety, I believe, today, even among the people of God. And if you're one of these people, you listen. You listen to this sermon. And I pray that God, some of the words will touch your heart. Not your head. Touch your heart. You see, when it touches your heart, it makes a difference. You can read many a sermon on how you overcome anxiety and worry and all. You can read them, but you can read the thousands of them, but it's the words of God will touch your heart. And that's what we pray for. The words of God will touch your heart. First Peter 5 and 7. I've used this verse so often as well. And so there other preachers. First Peter 5 and 7 is a lovely little verse. It's a Peter speaking about peace, about care. And he's lovely verses. And he says, casting all your care upon him. For he cares for you. Casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Note, all your care. Cast all your care upon him, for he cares for you. And he cares. God cares. It says in Hebrews 13 and 5, he will never leave us nor forsake us. That's a promise to God's people. And try and grasp that promise. And try and grasp who promised it. The mighty God who says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. In Matthew 6, there's a few verses in Matthew 6. I think Jack had mentioned this this morning. Matthew 6. And looking at verses uh, 25 of Matthew 6. This is the Lord Jesus Christ speaking in the, what's known as the Sermon on the Mount. And he says in verse 25 of Matthew 6. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat, or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body, what you shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you no much better than they? And then he goes on and says, consider the lilies of the field, that's verse 28, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. Yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed 
like one of these. You know, when it says, when Jesus, when the word says, therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, the word could mean here also, don't be anxious. The word can take on that meaning. Don't be anxious for your life. For what supports your life? You see, what will support your life? Okay, when look at purposes like food, clothing, that's good. But you see, there's an awful, an awful lot more. What you need also is a piece of God, the wonderful piece of God. And God is saying here in the, that verse, he's got everything you need, he will supply. Not only, I believe, supply for your body, but he'll supply other things you need, such as his peace for your spirit. His, the peace of God. See, you've got a body, you need food, you'll take it. Probably get your supper tonight, your, your dinner today, or whatever you had. You take that for the good of your body, that's good. And you give God thanks for that, for the feed. But God gives you other necessities. He gives you food for your soul. He gives you the word of God, but he gives you promises. And he gives you his peace. So he says, look, don't be anxious. He's still on the throne. Don't be anxious. John 14 and 1. Wonderful little verse. Beautiful verse. When Jesus, it would seem that the disciples were quietly, dis greatly distressed when Jesus had told them previously that he would be leaving them. They didn't, they didn't fully grasp it, but he, they were distressed. And he says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. And then he goes on to tell me, he says, in my father's house are many mansions, or in my father's house are many rooms. I go to prepare a place for you. But it says lovely little words, let not your heart be troubled. Oh, if you've got a troubled heart tonight, I just pray these words would penetrate right into your heart and you hear the words of the great God, the words of Jesus says, look, don't have a troubled heart. Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe in God as you also believe and me. And Jesus is consoling them then because they thought he was he was leaving them, but he was consoling them. So the word says in verse Philippians 4 and 6, don't be anxious about the things of this life. And some of the things of this life is the things which happening at present, this virus. You hear of many hundreds of thousands of people taking ill some quite seriously and you hear many people dying he said don't be anxious let not your heart be troubled he cares for you he cares for you and that's what the Lord's saying be careful don't be anxious for anything and then it's, it goes on and says but in everything so Philippians 4 said but in everything by prayer and supplication and the word this prayer and supplication arises from a sense of need or want. It says, look, in prayer and supplication, you have a need. But in prayer and supplications, but in everything by prayer and supplications, with thanksgiving, let your request be known unto God. Oh, brethren, thanksgiving is connected to prayer. So we come to God, even hearts are down. You come to God with hearts down a bit, hearts are maybe anxious, but you come to God and pray. No matter how you feel, you can always remember the times of God has blessed you. Always remember it and be thankful, no matter how you feel now. Think of the things that you can thank God for. You know, it's a horrible feeling, depression. It's horrible. Horrible feeling, you can't seem to see light. You go up in the morning, can't you seem to see light, it's all that. But oh, there's always that time you look upward. And you see that God is still on the throne. And no matter how you feel, you can always find something thankful to, to thank him for or to pray for. Looking back, you can look back and thank God. Thank you, Lord, for my birth. You say, John, you were born in the Gorbals, Fordham Street. How can you give God thanks for that? Well, my background alone, the fact that I, the parents that came from, ultimately, these parents that brought me into life were saved. And through these parents, I heard the word of God. 
And ultimately through that, I was saved. So although I was born in a terrible environment as regards poverty, but at the same time, I'm saved. So you can look back and say, give God thanks for that. You can give God thanks over the years and give God thanks for some of the friends or some of the family of some of the friends you've met. And I see many of you here. I'm looking at you right now. Many of the friends you've met. You give God thanks for that. And you're anxious. You say, Lord, what am I anxious for? I have so much to thank you for. I've met you. You know, I used to say when I was first saved, I says to people, people says, where's the, where's the difference? I says, well, I've, I met real people. That's the term I used to use to worry with people. I says, I met Christians. I call them real people. 100% people, real people. And it's still good when you realize you're surrounded by real people, godly people, people who are praying for you. That's, a thank, that's something to be thankful for. Something to be really thankful for. So the apostle said, look, don't, let you, don't be anxious about anything. Don't be anxious. So it goes on in verse 7. He says in verse 7, don't be anxious. He says in verse 6, be careful of nothing but everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. Oh, the peace of God, which passeth all understanding. That's tremendous. The peace of God. The peace which God gives, the peace he will give us. He'll give us his peace, which means when we dwell in him, dwell in the word of God, he gives us his peace. And these anxious thoughts we had of sometimes move into oblivion. And it's when we, you see, he'll take what cares from the world, the problems which are, which are tie, tying us down at present. I love a little verse. I've used this again so often. Isaiah 26 and 3 is a lovely verse regards that. My mother and father used to have this little verse above the mantelpiece for many years, even before I was un I was converted. It was there for years, the, the little plaque. And it says, it's Isaiah 26 and 3, Thou will keep him in perfect peace, his mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in you. Trusting in God, trusting in his God, that will keep him in perfect peace. His mind is stayed in you. Well, our mind is stayed in Christ. Jack was on that this morning. Look upward. If you've risen with Christ, seek these things which are above, where Christ sitteth in the right hand of God. It says, oh, keep him in perfect peace. Now that word means undisturbed peace. Undisturbed peace when your mind has confidence in God. Oh, praise God. And look now that little verse again when Peter says in 1 Peter 5 and 7, casting all your cares upon him, for he careth for you. Now, Psalm 55 and 22 is another little verse that I reckon that's really taken from. And it says in Psalm 55 and 22, as you'll see it in the word there if you book it up, Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. The psalmist is saying, look, put your care and anxieties on the Lord and be calm. Put all your anxieties on him. Another translation for that would mean cast upon Jehovah what has been laid in you. You see, at the, the anxiousness and these thoughts and these depression which has been laid in you, you cast them upon the Lord and the Lord will take them. The Lord will take them all right. These anxieties cast them all upon him who cares for us. He shall sustain thee. This means that God will give you his strength and grace. Remember in the time that Paul had a thorn in the flesh. Now, I'm not going to go into the debate what that thorn was. This is 2 Corinthians 12 and 9. 
Paul had a problem. He calls it a thorn in the flesh. Some people say it's pride. Other people, oh, there's all sorts of explanations about what this thorn in the flesh was. But it's something that bothered them. Something which gave, which was causing anxiety. A lot of anxiety. And he came to the Lord with this. He says, he came to the Lord three times. And he wanted God to remove us. He's anxious. And eventually God says to him, and this is the secret of this little verse. It's 2 Corinthians 12 and 9. Paul called it a messenger of Satan. Whatever it was, there was something at bottom. It was creating anxiety in him. And the Lord says to him, my grace, my grace, Paul, is sufficient for you. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Think of that. My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Wonderful, wonderful, free and sovereign grace. My grace is made sufficient for you. You see, we have a God who cares. Remember that, brothers and sisters, in the day we were having no spirit, we have a God who cares for his people, who cares for his children, who cares for you. If you've got Anxious hearts. Now I know it can be hard, but remember all these scriptures. You have a God who cares for you. Think of what He's already given you. All the people surrounding you. You know, Christian. Look back to your background, to your saver. Why were you saved? The parents you had. It was all a means that eventually God, perhaps, saving you, saving your soul. Some of you brought up in Christians' home. You give God thanks for that. Praise God. These anxieties and these stresses that we feel dragging us down. And perhaps you have lost your peace. Perhaps you have no peace. My peace is gone. Oh, cast all your cares upon him. As Peter says, for he careth for you. Is his grace, is his grace not sufficient for us wonderful grace sufficient you may say oh John I find at times prayer hard this depression cast me down so much you know I believe many of God's people over the years have felt the same many saints of God have felt the same way you don't have to read their books read their biographies their autobiographies and they repeat I just keep repeating this verse. He said, John, I find it hard to pray. Cast all your cares upon him, for he careth for you. The meaning is we have to commit everything to him. You know, we will lose loved ones. We will lose loved ones. I've lost, well, I'm only one left, my own family now. I've lost a daughter, as you know, but you will lose loved ones. Your health perhaps will be affected. We can't live with it. And we'll feel we have no strength. But cast all your cares upon him. Isaiah 53 and 4. Isaiah, that lovely verse in Isaiah 53, where speaking of the suffering servant, the Lord. Jesus Christ. And Isaiah 53, 4 says, Surely he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. He has borne our griefs. He has carried our sorrows. Those griefs we feel, these sorrows we feel when we go into depressions or anxieties, that's what it is. It's sorrows, it's griefs. You're feeling grief stricken at times for no reason you don't know why. He, Jesus, surely he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. You know, that verse I was reading, trying to read a bit on commentators on it. One commentator says, look, this means taking a burden from one and placing it upon another. And our burden are placed upon the Lord Jesus Christ. Not only the burden of the burden of our sins placed upon him, and every other burden what we have. 
Sporting Friday, I spoke the other day there on light and dark. Remember, I spoke about lightness, light coming from light into dark. And First John 2 and 8 says, again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true and in him, because the darkness is past and the true light now shine. The darkness is past. You see, when you're anxious, it's a dark time. When you've got a lot of anxiousness, and that's really severe, of anxious moments and depression, it's really severe, it's darkness. But you see, the darkness is past, First John says. The true light now shineth. The light shining. The darkness is, the darkness, the devil's dark, but Christ is light. He is a light of the world. Jesus says, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. You may say, oh, John, that sounds good. But have you ever been in my situation? John, that verse sounds tremendous. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. It's hard, Lord, John, when you're walking in darkness. I know, but realize, grasp at the word, grasp the promise, grasp who God is. What he's saying to you as a child of God, you shall have the light of life. The light of life. You feel at times in terrible darkness then. If we are followers, we shall not walk in darkness. So be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be known unto God. And the peace of God which passeth all understanding, verse 7, and the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and mind through Christ Jesus. You know, this peace which can be felt in these anxious cares, the disciples felt that peace when Jesus says, he rebuked the storm and he says, peace be still. And peace came in, as well as the storm being still, peace came in. To their hearts. Oh, when we can confidently commit, confidently commit our anxieties to the Lord, surely He had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. The verse 7 says, The peace of God which passeth all understanding. Now, that's a lovely verse. What's the peace of God which passeth all understanding? Now, this expression denotes. A peace imparted of a higher kind. It's a heavenly peace. It's a heavenly peace. And this is a peace promised to God's people. You know, in Luke 2 and 10, remember the angels to the shepherds, these lovely words and they're afraid. The angel says, do not be afraid. I'm going to come to the angels in a moment. Do not be afraid. We will have trials, as I said, we will lose loved ones. We do live in trying times, I accept that. But remember, he does care for his people. When the devil's voice says God does not really care, point him to Calvary. Look to Calvary. The cross of suffering shows, yes, he cares. I know he cares. You know, I believe he gives angels to watch over us. That's how I mentioned that one in Luke, Luke 2 and 10, where angels said to the shepherds, be not afraid. In Psalm 91, in verse 11, it's a, I'm going to give you a few scriptures and angels. Ministering spirits, Hebrews calls them. Ministering spirits tend to bless the people of God. So it says in Hebrews, sorry, Psalm 91, 11, for he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. I'll repeat that. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Psalm 34 and 7 is another one about angels looking after the people of God. Psalm 34 and 7. And it says, and the angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him 
and the Gavra them. This means it's what I see from this that God instructs his angels to watch over his children. Now that's tremendous. God instructs his angels with instructions to watch over his children. For Hebrews 1 and 14 says, are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be the heirs of salvation? We are the heirs of salvation. An heir is someone who will collect, collect the inheritance. And we have an inheritance to collect in Christ. Okay, we're bound for heaven, but there's glory. And we're heirs. We shall, we shall the Spirit sent forth to minister for them who shall be the heirs of salvation. And angels are sent by God, I believe, to protect, to protect us. And always, so we shall inherit what God has for us. We've got so much for us, and God gives us, he gives us his word. It gives us fellowship. It gives us the church. It gives us the preaching. It gives us the word of God, as I says. But it gives us angels, and it gives us all these promises because we are heirs of salvation. And God will get us there. And he gives us all these means, all these means. So God is saying, look, don't be anxious about anything. I've given you all these means. Don't be anxious. Colossians 3 and 2. I think Jack mentioned this this morning. Set your affection on things above, not on things of the earth. Set your affection on heavenly things. Brothers and sisters, we are a heavenly people. Heavenly people chosen in Christ. We'll go through this scene of time. I mean, I've been a Christian for 50, 54 years or something. It's a long while. Jack's been longer. Some of you have been longer than me. So we go through this scene of time. There'll be problems. There'll be trials, tribulations. But he has promised never to leave us. And when we look at these scriptures, don't be anxious about the things of this world. He said, don't be anxious. He's given us his word. We're the heirs of salvation. He sent these ministering spirits to look after us, to protect us. And he has carried our sorrows. He has carried our griefs. So when Jesus paid the price for our sins, he paid a price for everything to give us a life, to give us a life as sons of God. God doesn't want his children. You wouldn't want your children to go through life with terrible depressions. Now, I know it does happen to some teenagers and where heart goes out to the parents at the end of taking their life because of terrible depression. Now, that would, that would finish you. You'd be finished for a long while. But God does not want that to happen to his children. So he's given us all these means. Brothers and sisters, remember the little verse again. Be careful for nothing. Or don't be anxious about anything. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. Now my time's about up. And I give God thanks for the day and hour he saved us, he redeemed us, he washed his blood. And you say, John, you went on quite a bit about this, about depression. Have you ever experienced, yes, I've experienced depression. So I know where you're coming from. So those of you who go through hard times, I know it's a horrible thing, but always look outward and always realize so much is for our benefit. So much, I know some people who have been depressed and anxious, but they still come to the house of God. If they're physically able, they go to the house of God because they realize that that's the means of grace. See, some of God's people are getting so much depression, inexperienced again, they're cast down, they don't feel like anything. And yet, the very means which God has given for them, the word of God, fellowship, is there. They don't see it. And God has given you these means to uplift you. How often have you come out Maybe you've maybe not experienced it. You've come out and 
you've been down a bit, you've maybe not had a bad week, maybe you've been ill even, and it's that can get you down, and you get into the house of God. And my, what a difference it makes. What a difference. The fellowship, the oneness, that's the means of grace. And God has all that. The fellowship is a means of grace. Angels looking after us to make sure that we'll get there. Brothers and sisters will get there. So trust God. Trust God. And if you feel you're that low, you can't get out. Try and think of the, the simplicity of what I said tonight. It's very simple. Simplicity. It should try and lift you from that life, whatever it is. Now, I've spoke to over the many years I've met Christians. I've met Christians in terms sometimes horrible depression for years. And I know it's, they've been ruined because of it. And I've tried to explain to them the very things I'm showing you. And they end up, some of them, I don't even know where they are now. But keep looking upward. Set your affection in things above, not in things over there. You see, we're a heavenly people. We're not of this world. You're not of this world. You will not fit into this world, but you'll fit into God's world. That's the people of God. That's where you will fit in. And that's where you will be happy among God's people. And I, in the house of God, using the means of grace God has given us, I pray God will bless these few thoughts to you.